because uh, uh, my Sheltie uh, can't stand men and she's all over you. And I knew at that moment that the Sheltie was trying to get my attention and tell me something that Sheltie had some very strong needs or concerns. And I heard myself saying, uh, she's very depressed. Uh, she, and she's depressed because you haven't been giving her bones and she loves bones. You haven't been taking her for rides in the car. And uh, also there's a big black dog that she's afraid of. And she said, I can't believe uh, what you've just said, that uh, yes, she's been very depressed for weeks. Her favorite uh, thing is uh, to eat uh, our bones. She loves bones and I haven't been bringing her home any bones for a long time. Her favorite thing to do is to ride in the automobile with her head hanging out. And we haven't done that. And, and we've just started a new route on our walks when I get home from school. She was a school teacher and she said, right. said uh, you know, we go by a uh, yard where there's a big Doberman, a big black Doberman that's behind a fence and it lunges at her and I can see her shaking. She knows she's supposed to defend me, but she's terrified. And so I said, well, we'll get her some bones uh, for, <laughs> for God's sake and, yeah. and uh, take her a different route on the walks and, <laughs> yes. you know, duh, and, uh, and uh, give her, uh, let her ride in the car some more. Well, the next time I had uh, dinner over there, which was a couple of months later, her, her little Sheltie was very, very calm. She said, I did all the things that you told me and, uh, uh, her depression went away immediately. And this mm -hmm. was my first experience of communicating with, uh, with uh, animals. And, uh, and I found that it's really quite easy and we all have this ability. Uh, this is one of, the, one of my missions is to, to not only to be able to demonstrate this sort of thing, but to, but to teach people how to do this. And you've been able to like come into the presence of uh, large wild animals and communicate with them, and in fact, call them to meet you at a at a certain time and place, and they've shown up. Yes, I have. I've uh, uh, been able to uh, call uh, animals to myself, and also to know where to find them in the in the uh, wilderness. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, called deer to me, and uh, bighorn. A herd of bighorn sheep. I once called to me, and and they appeared. Uh, the next morning uh, at my campsite, three miles away. Right. Uh, and so I found that it's quite easy. My, my partner, Astrid, actually uh, is probably more talented in this than, than I am. I, this last time we were camping in the Northern Rockies, she uh, called uh, the bears, bears to her. And, and for the next six weeks, bears were appearing in front of us everywhere we went. And, we were uh, in several different parts of the country. They would just suddenly be crossing our paths and it was an amazing thing. And uh, I, she has um, deer walk up to her out of, the, out of the trees and instead of running off when they see her, they drop to their knees and just gaze at her in, a, in trust and innocence uh, 10 feet away. And this is an extraordinary thing. Uh, so in some ways my partner has uh, in some areas she surpassed uh, what I have achieved and we love to compare notes uh, so obviously we have uh, find it great joy to be out in the uh, in the natural world. Now somehow they the, the wild animals seem to know what your intentions are I mean you can't sneak up on them you're in their world pretty much and they, they know who to trust and who not to trust somehow I mean uh, what would you say to people that you know are you know, pretty fundamentalist type Christians that say, well, you know, man is meant to dominate the earth and come in and, you know, you know, well, be a this, steward of the earth. And this, this was uh, actually uh, an insert that was put into the uh, <coughs> creation story. Uh, mm. Long after that uh, creation story came into being, it, had, it was the influence of the patriarchal takeover of uh, the church. Right. And uh, so in this uh, uh, in command, supposedly coming from our Creator, we are told that, that our destiny is to dominate uh, uh, the earth, uh, to, to, uh, to rule over all life and to subdue the earth. Right. And of course, this is, we've done such a good job subduing the earth 
and having dominion over uh, all life as that, that uh, mandate from the supposed creator uh, uh, was given to us, then we have uh, we put ourselves in, in great peril. Uh, we are spiraling toward destruction and we are not going to survive the 21st century unless we can turn things around environmentally. And so we did a very good job subduing the earth. We were never meant to do this. We were meant, the whole idea of being, uh, to, of being in the Garden of Eden is that, we were, is that we were meant to be caregivers in the garden and to be in relationship with all life. <clears throat> and so as a, a teacher, as a shaman, I'm teaching uh, people how to be in relationship with all life. And this relationship is, it, it can be a, an ecstatic experience when we realize that, that we, we're really not separated. We have just accepted uh, this dogma that we are separated from, from the earth and from life right. and from the nature kingdoms. Uh, they are part of us and we are part of them. Absolutely. Okay, now I always throw, throw in a few off the wall questions. You, you've, you have a lot of vision questions. I want, you've got some coming up. I want you to give me the dates and, and places on uh, we those. We take groups out uh, right. for vision questing, which is an ancient rite of pass passage that mm -hmm. was uh, used by the Native Americans. Uh, we do this uh, every year, and we have a group uh, that will be vision questing at the, um, the last week in May in Canyonlands, Utah. Uh, so people that are interested can check my website, uh, which is www.petercalhoun.com, and, and you can uh, click in on Vision Quest. Uh, okay. uh, but this is uh, one of the most powerful experiences that I think a person can have during that Vision Quest. Uh, uh, people have the opportunity to spend uh, several days alone <clears throat> in their silent meditation and working with their spiritual practices. And it's a, it's a very life-transforming experience. I, I recommend this. Right now, in your book, you, you describe it's not necessarily, this is not a retreat. This is not just where you're just kind of taking a vacation there. I mean, you're, no. you're challenging yourself. You're, it's not necessarily all positive and good and <laughs> no, Tony, that's happy, exactly happy, correct. Joy, joy. Well, it's, it, it's not positive in the sense that it's always feel good because when, when we get out in wilderness, when we go out into solitude, then uh, it, quite often our, our demons arise, our internal demons. It can be a fear of the dark, a fear of large animals, a fear of snakes, a fear of just being alone, or just nameless fears. Mm -hmm. And these come up, uh, as well as the fears that we are very much aware of, um, the fear of things that are going on in our life. And so we are forced to confront these. But that, when that's against the backdrop of this uh, 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 magical and, and beautiful panorama of the Red Rock Canyons in, in that uh, area of Utah, uh, then it, it is so nurturing, it is so uh, powerful that one almost always has a, a transformational experience. Right now, you've spent a lot of time <clears throat> in wilderness areas, and uh, you've probably you know come in contact with a lot of different <clears throat> wild creatures. Have you ever had a Bigfoot sighting or heard tell of any anything about Bigfoot? Uh, we've never had a Bigfoot sighting uh, on our vision quest. I did. Uh, encounter uh, indirectly a Bigfoot uh, years before that when I was uh, uh, staying in the uh, Sangre de Cristo Mountains in, in New Mexico. And I was in a pretty isolated area that summer staying in a cabin. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we found uh, huge tracks, uh, bare feet that were much larger than humans. Right. <clears throat> Several times we got that intense smell that has been described around these uh, the Sasquatch or the Bigfoot, and right. so we knew it was around, and we also was felt it a that, skunky kind of smell. Yes, yeah, a skunky kind of yeah. smell, and we knew that it was benevolent. It was curious about right. us, but we knew that it was benevolent, and we never felt any danger from from any of these creatures. Now, I, <coughs> I was reading about one of your vision quests, and uh, you you uh, you did feel fear and danger, and you you felt like the message that you were receiving, even though you were acting calm was, I need to get the hell out of here. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and this is fear. This was not paranoia. It was based on something very real. 